on today. If you're here, just wave your hand just so we can acknowledge you. Just with a hand wave. No first time guests on today? Oh, we are all family. Oh, we had a first time guest. We are so happy that you chose KBCI as your place of worship on today. We would like to provide you with some information because we want to stay in connection with you. We do many things at KBCI. We are on the prayer line Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. We are in the Word on Zoom on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. getting an awesome word from our pastor. Yes, yes, an awesome word. Throughout the week, it is rich. Our children, they are in children's church receiving the word on their level. Um, every Sunday except for first Sunday. So there are many things going on. We want to stay connected with you. If you join with us online, please put your name in the chat. Let us know who connected with you, who invited you on service on today. And if you want to see what's going on at KBCI, you can join us at what? www.kbcinc.org. Have a blessed Sunday. Let's get back to worship. Hallelujah. We pray that you came with a praise on your heart this morning. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, right there. Just give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Give God your highest praise. Come on, everybody. Put your hands together like this. Come on. Come on. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high. The highest praise of God, legend him always. And all God's people say, Halle, 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 The highest yeah. praise acknowledge in him always yeah. And all God's people say Halle, 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 The Lord is high above the heaven. And the glory above the nation. So give God the highest praise, acknowledging Him always. And God God's people sing. Halle, 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 The 
is glory above all nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nations. And His glory above the nations. So give God the highest praise. Say halle, halle, halle. We worship, we worship, I told you, I told you, and we declare, we declare. 
sound strange, but the atmosphere of God is in this house. Yes. What is the atmosphere of God? It's where the weight of his glory begins to descend and sit amongst us. And when he shows up, all things gotta flee. Come on, hands lifted, hands lifted, hands lifted. Jesus. 
hearts Cause only you can mold and hold us And we will lift up our eyes Yeah Hear the hills To where our help comes from Say there's a lifting up Say there's a lifting of the hands. Say we will lift up our hands. Say we will lift up our heart. We will lift up our heart. Cause only you can hold us. Only you can console us, Jesus. Only you can heal us. We will lift up our heart. Yeah. We will lift up our heart. We will. Now come on to your own words in your own way. Will you just begin to lift your hands and begin to lift your voice to the God who's lifting you, to the God who's holding you, to the God who's keeping you. Lord, we thank you that you're lifting us. We thank you that you're lifting us. We thank you that you're lifting us out of the muck and the mire, out of depression, out of places. Yes, you're lifting, yes, you're lifting, yes, you're lifting us, Jesus. Real quick, let's go right here. Hands up, we say this. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, this is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. You got to get aggressive with the devil right here. This up. This is how I fight my battles. Hey, this is how I fight my battles. Now let's make this declaration right here. Says this, we say. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm Say it may look like I'm surrounded. Say praise is how I fight. Praise is how I fight my Praise is how I fight my battles. Praise is how I fight my battles. Cause the weapon of my warfare is not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down. Praise is how I fight my battles. Say praise is how I fight my battles. Praise is how I fight my battles. I got one more confession right here. One more confession. We out the way. Say the devil is a liar and God is exalted. Said we'll never be defeated. No, we'll never be defeated. Said the devil is a liar. God is exalted. Said we'll never be defeated. We'll never be defeated. Said the devil is a liar. God is exalted. Said we'll never be defeated. Said we'll never be defeated. Said the devil is a liar. And God is exalted. Say God is exalted. Say God is exalted. God he is exalted. His name is Jesus and he's exalted. And he said if I be lifted, that I'll draw men unto me. Great is the name of God. Great are you in the counsel of your holiness. Great are you in the way you move. Great are you in the way you work. Said I'll never be defeated. Said I'll never be defeated. Come whatever may, I'll never. 
Come whatever may I'll never Cause you're walking and you're talking with me And you're telling me that I'm your own And you're holding me in your hands So I'll never be defeated So I'll leave because I'll never Send I'll dance because I'll never I will rejoice Cause I'll never be defeated Said I'll never, 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 never No, never Said I'll never be defeated Never be defeated Now come on, if you know that God is exalted Give him the glory, come on Say God is exalted Say God is exalted. 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 You're exalted, Jesus. You're exalted. You're exalted. Say God is. God is exalted. We are. So many times when we come into the presence of the Lord, we tend to get comfortable with the program. We know that there are certain elements of the service that happen at certain times, not realizing that any given moment God wants to interrupt what's going on. I believe that we don't have to wait for any particular part of the service to get what yeah. we need from God. Is there anybody in here this morning that needs something from the Lord? Well, I just want to share with you this morning that you are one act of worship away from your miracle. And at this point in the worship service, your faith should be at a level now that you can reach for God and touch heaven. We just got through singing about lifting our heads, lifting our hearts, and lifting our eyes. I wonder if there are a few people in here this morning that'll lift their voices and just begin to give God glory in this place. Oh, come on. Lift your voices and begin to give God praise this morning. Oh, come on, all over this building, all over this building, come on, begin to give God glory. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lift, lift, lift your voices, lift your voices, lift. Oh, come on, oh, come on. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let everything that have if you have breath, open your mouths and give him glory in this place. If you're breathing, make a shout in this place. Make a noise in this place that touches heaven. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. oh bless your name. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, touch heaven this morning. With your voice, touch heaven this morning. Open your mouth and touch heaven. Yes. 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 Touch heaven with your voice. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. 
We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. You've been so good. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, come on. If you know you're standing in the threshold of a miracle from God, just begin to tell him thank you now. You don't have to wait for it to manifest. You know he is able to do. Thank him now. Thank him now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. And we thank you in advance. And we thank you in advance. Your credit is good with us. We can thank you in advance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, be pleased to accept our sacrifices today. We give you the sacrifice of praise, not according to how we feel, not according to what we think, but we bless you because of who you are. Huh. You're a good God. You're a good God. We bless you for who you are. You're a good God. And so we tell you thank you. Continue to move in this place today by your presence and by your power. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. We greet you in Jesus' joy today. I'm excited. just to be a child of God today. I say it all the time. I just believe we're in a year of defining moments. Decisions are before us that we have to make in order for us to move into the next season. Additionally, God is doing some things supernaturally by his presence and power that are beyond our ability. And when it's all said and done, God is going to get the glory. <clears throat> Just look at your neighbor and tell them the next thing that happens in your life, God's going to get the glory for it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. God's going to get the glory for it. <clears throat> if you try to take the credit, you're going to look crazy. Because people are going to look at you and know that if it had not been for the Lord... You're going to get one of those, if it had not been for the Lord, blessings. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are just two days away from spring. Uh, I know, I know that um, we're able to identify the season changes in the year on our calendar. <clears throat> but 
can you discern the season changes in your life spiritually? God is trying to do something new and fresh in your life. Somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, do it for me. Do it new and fresh. New and fresh. New and fresh. <clears throat> We're in that space. We're in that period. I'm excited. I um, was trying to determine when I was going to share a couple of testimonies or praise reports. Perhaps I'll share it now. Our brother uh, Joe Patterson, as you know, um, about three weeks ago had hip surgery and has been recovering. And we praise God for God's healing power in his life. <laughs> and so he was supposed to be out of work a couple of weeks and then go back to work and uh, on his first day back at the job supervisor called him in and gave him a promotion <laughs> This past week, I talked about how God was going to <clears throat> give us sweatless victories. Does anybody remember that? Sweatless victories. What does that mean? A victory you don't have to work for. God was going to do some supernatural things for you just because of the season you're in. And I got a text the following morning. <clears throat> from our uh, uh, sister Ebony, who was talking about how her boss called her in and she just assumed that it was for their regular conversation and updates about how things were going. <clears throat> and when she walked in, uh, saw another person of influence was above her immediate supervisor and uh, she got concerned and was wondering what was going on how many of you know how this story ends and before she knew it she had received a promotion but listen <laughs> she had received a promotion that she wanted years ago and now they were offering it to her and tell them that they had nobody else in mind for it but her with a significant increase in salary. Somebody say sweatless victory or sweat. Now, you know, it, it, it may not seem like much to you. Listen, ain't no need you getting jealous. God got enough blessings for everybody. Eh? Ain't, ain't no need you getting envious. Just begin to give God glory for what he wants to do in your life. We've been seeing a wave of God doing these things in people's employment. How many of you know God is concerned about everything that concerns us? <clears throat> Even our economic positions. And I'm so grateful for these wonderful, powerful testimonies of defining moments that are coming in. And I do so to encourage your faith. I, I, I'm, 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 I was sharing with a pastor yesterday who was feeling... Um, somewhat despondent a 
about some things that were going on uh, in this church. And, and, and the Lord had me to share this, that um, you're having to change a culture. And sometimes shifting or changing cultures take time. Because one of the greatest <clears throat> challenges to change is mindset. Mindset. Our minds may be our biggest blessing blocker. Because we continue to view God or view what he wants to do in our life within a certain segment. And so God is sending a wave of supernatural occurrences here in our church to let us know we got to change our mind. Look at your name and say, God wants to do more for you. You didn't even say it like you believe he wants to do it. Look at him eyeball to eyeball and say, God wants to do something new and fresh in your life. Something that transcends your dreams and your visions. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for you. Oh, you better believe the word if you don't believe me. Tell somebody, God's preparing something for you. You didn't tell the right person. Look at the next person and say, God is preparing something just for you. He's got you on his mind. It's tailor-made. Nobody else can have it. He'll prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. There's a seat that's reserved for you that's got your name on it. Somebody say, my blessing has got my name on it. I'm not worried about me losing my place because it's just for me. If you believe it, give him glory for it, right? It's just for me. It's just for me. You better make a sound if you know God's got something just for It's for me. I tell them they come though. Yes, God, and I thank you in this place. You may have your seat. Just for me. I don't mean to be selfish, but it's just for me. It's just for I got a word today. I'm not going to let y'all push me beyond this. Isaiah 43. I know, I know. two days from spring but I wonder if there's anybody in here this morning that can sense that God is about to usher you into a new season can you just by faith believe that you are two days away from a season change in your life if you believe it I dare you to stand to your feet and give God the best praise you can right I'm just two days away 
from God turning it in my favor. Just give him. Can you praise him that you're two days out? Just two days out. Just, just two days away from a miracle. Two days, two days, two days. Ah. God bless you. Be seated in the presence of our God. Isaiah 43. I'm two days away. Forty-eight hours. Just forty-eight. Just forty-eight hours. I don't know. Somebody may need encouraging this morning. Just touch them on the shoulder and say, "Hold out, just for forty-eight more hours." I believe that you're in the threshold. Forty-eight hours. Forty-eight. Forty. Come on, put your hands together. Isaiah 43, let's begin reading at the 18th verse. Isaiah 43 and 18. Do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of whole. Behold, I will do a new thing. Some I shout now. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Clap your hands and give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this time in Isaiah's ministry, um, Judah was going through periods and peaks and valleys, if you were, of revival and consequences. Some seasons were filled with God's miraculous power. Thank you so much. And in other seasons were filled with consequences due to their rebellion. Um, their seasons of rebellion many times caused them to have to face situations and circumstances that were outside of God's plan for their life. Yet, um, each time they went through those moments, they were spared because of God's mercy. I'm sure I would not have to look very far to find a consensus in here this morning that at least there are a few honest people that can say they have been spared some things. Been spared. Been spared some things because God was merciful. <clears throat> Not that I wasn't guilty, nor that I didn't deserve it. But God spared me. 
Anybody grateful for his mercy? <clears throat> Despite how good we may look this morning, we each know that we've blown it. <laughs> we each know where we've missed the mark, where we should have received God's judgment, but he didn't give up on us. He didn't allow the devil's plan for our life to be executed. Can you imagine if everything that the devil had in store for you, he was able to execute? Can you imagine the things that the devil would like to do in your life, but God says no? <clears throat> I, I, I know, we, we don't realize it, but Satan, which really means enemy, has no good thoughts for you. You don't know how much you're annoying him right now by your praise. You know, we really don't understand that by getting up and coming into his house and then participating in the praise and the worship, how much you're annoying God. It, it's like, <clears throat> it's like, I, I believe that Satan dreads Sunday morning. Because all over the world, there are believers that are gathering. And so what he tries to do is to get as many as he can to not participate. So we start coming up with excuses as to why I can't get there. But I want you to know that if you really want to get on somebody's nerves, get on the devil's nerves. If you really want to annoy somebody, just go to church. Because you throw hell into confusion. Because the, hell does not understand that despite everything that it threw at you, you have still made up your mind you're going to give God glory. I threw sickness at them, but they're still praising me. I threw calamity at them, but they're still praising me. I threw economic situations at them, but they're still praising me. Hell does not understand why you're sitting here given the week you had last week. Given what's going on in your family. And all the things that they do to try to prevent you from praising. But you still have made up your mind that I'm going to give God glory. And the incredible thing is, is despite all that he's thrown our way. We still got enough mind to praise him when we know we haven't been faithful. We need to be very careful about how we determine what a person's praise or worship looks like because of what we think we know about their lives. What do they got to praise for? What do they got to worship? I know what he doing. I know what she's doing. We don't understand the essence of God's mercy. We don't understand what it took for that person to get here in order for them to praise beyond everything that the enemy is trying to torment their minds over. You see their actions, but God is looking at their heart. Oh, it's quiet in here because we're judging what we see, but we can't see their heart. 
Aren't you glad that God dealt with us according to our heart and not according to our behaviors? If he dealt with us according to our behaviors, who would be able to sit here this morning? If he dealt with us according to our words, who would be able to sit here this morning? Let me give you this. If he dealt with us according to our thoughts, who would be here this morning? If he dealt with us according to our imaginations and those things that flood our soul, who would be able to sit here this morning? Some of y'all sitting here right now. We can't see your words. We can't see your deeds. But God sees you looking across the room, side-eyeing people. He knows what's on your mind. He can read everything that's flooding your soul. He can hear the dislike and the hatred and the judgment. Oh, what they wear that for? I wouldn't have wore it like that. I'd have wore it like this. Oh, my God. Look at them all that they're going through to praise God. That's fake. It's phony. You know the thing. Oh, why did they come sit next to me today? I can't. I wanted this seat free. I didn't want nobody sitting next to me. Don't, don't, don't act like, don't act. Somebody shout mercy. Thank God for his mercy. I wouldn't be able to be here if it wasn't for his mercy. And because of his mercy, God's got some promises in his word that are tailor made for you. God's got some promises in scripture that got your name on it. And I believe that when we look through the word of God, we see many of the promises and the principles that though within context it was for a particular time and season and era, is still relevant for today. It's still alive and powerful today. And we read in our text, as the, the, the prophet Isaiah is speaking to Israel and he tells them, don't remember things in the past. Consider not the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall I do it and you not know it? Mm. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That's a prophetic promise that is hovering over our lives today. And as we consider this text, in the foreground of this text, there are at least four things that we need to consider as we wrestle with a new thing now. I don't know where you are, but the first thing I want to drop to you this morning is this. Don't be afraid. Yeah, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah, the 43rd chapter and the first verse of this chapter, the prophet says, as inspired by the Lord, I don't know what you're afraid of, but God says, don't be afraid. I don't know what you're looking at. I don't know what you've been walking through, but he dispels the fear with one word. He dispels the controller and the manipulator. That's what fear is. It controls you. It manipulates. It intimidates. Fear is a crippler. Fear comes and attempts to try to have a greater presence in your life than faith. 
Why are we sharing praise reports from people? Because you need to not be afraid of what's ahead. Because God is speaking something new and fresh in our lives. Fear, 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 fear. Paul says it this way, that God did not give us fear, but he gave us power, love, and a sound mind. If we let fear comes in, it will take control of our minds. And so he tells us, don't be afraid. The next thing he tells us in the fifth verse of this chapter is that you're not alone. Fear not for I am with you. I'm with you. Those are some of the most comforting words in scripture to note that God is with us. That even when there may not be any other physical presence with us, we are not alone because God is with us. I will dare say this morning that even sitting here in the crowd of all of these people, there may be people that still feel like they're alone. Just because you're with someone doesn't mean that you cannot feel like you are alone. We can dispel that fact because God says, I am with you. Somebody say, I'm, God is with me. The next thing is this. Tests and trials will not destroy you. Oh, my God. Verse 15 says this, when you pass through the waters, I don't know how you're walking right now and what you may be facing, but when you pass through the waters, God says that I will be with you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. I will not let the waters overtake you when you pass through the fire, it will not burn you. You will not be consumed by what you're going through. Your tests and your trials were not meant to kill you. They were only meant to be a testimony when God brings you out that God will be glorified in your life. If you know God is bringing you out, give him a praise right there. He's bringing you out. <laughs> Psalm 34 says it this way, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he delivers them out of them all. Deliver. Somebody say deliver. Deliver simply means that he's going to transport you from one place to another. Many may be your afflictions, but he will transport you out of them to the place where he desires for you to be. I know you may not feel it right now, but you're just in transportation. That's all. That's all. God is moving you from one season to another, and he's using trouble to get it done. He's using trials to get it done. He's using testing to get it done. Somebody say, I'm just in transport. I'm just in transport. I didn't come here to stay. God is moving me to a higher plane. They're not going to destroy you. And then finally, and this is for those people that understand a little bit of street talk. Anybody still remember some street lingo? You don't want to even confess to it. Because you don't want nobody to know. But simply stated, God's got your back. He says this, that he will make a way in the sea. Path through the waters. 
that he is able to create ways of supernatural provision for you in the midst of the calamity. Somebody say, God's got my back. When my resources ran out, God had resources that were beyond my ability. Oh, yes, yes. When others could not help me, God has a resource bank that is beyond human imagination. I don't have to worry. I don't even have to worry about the enemies coming against me. The Bible declares that the, the, the Redeemer, the Holy One, he is watching over me, that he's got my back. And when the enemy tries to come against me, I'm so glad that he makes a way for me. He makes a way in the wilderness. He puts streams in the desert. And when God wills a thing, it doesn't matter what's fighting against me. His will transcends every obstacle. As a matter of fact, because of his word, I can start declaring it's already done before it happens. I wonder if you can try that right now. Just say, it's already done. Even in the face of difficulty, I can look at my difficulty and say, it's already done. When the doctor makes a diagnosis about me, I can look in the doctor's face and just say, it's already done. They don't even understand what you're talking about, but I dare you to make a declaration over your own life right now and just say, it's already done. The Holy Ghost knows how to interpret what your words are. It's already done. You see my problem, but I see the promise. And when I say it's already done, it's because I've taken my eyes off of my problem and I'm looking at my promise. If you can see your promise, I want you to say it's already done. Let, let, let me hurry. Let me hurry. And so, and so, the prophet Isaiah, I'm almost done. The prophet Isaiah begins, begins this course, this dialogue in verse 18 by saying, uh, stop focusing on the past. Specifically, he was referencing Israel's former deliverance out of Egypt. That was perhaps one of the most glorious encounters that Israel had ever experienced. In about a couple of weeks or so, I think one of the most amazing television shows will be broadcast. And that is the Ten Commandments. As it depicts Israel's deliverance out of Egypt as it demonstrates all of the period of, of plagues that came upon Egypt, which led to their deliverance and brought them to the outskirts of the desert, facing the Red Sea. Imagine everything that Israel saw as the ten plagues were manifesting in Israel. Imagine leading up to the point where they have fled from Egypt and now Pharaoh has changed his mind and is chasing after them with intent to destroy them. And they're standing before the Red Sea. I can't imagine what it must have been like to see a sea open before their eyes. To not just a sea open, but the water standing up on either side of the ground of the sea. And them being able to pass through the Red Sea on dry ground, looking at the sea on either side of them, a miracle before their eyes. And then when they get to the other side of the sea, 
to see the sea close up on their enemies and the Lord said that the enemy that you saw today, you will never see that enemy again. Can you believe that God says to them, don't remember the miraculous things that I have done for you. Why? How can you tell me not to consider that anymore? Because he says, I'm going to do something that's greater than that. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. He, he says, I want to do something new. What can be bigger than the 12 plagues that you brought on Egypt? What could be bigger as I stood there and I watched each moment that you began to judge Israel? What could be bigger than that? What could be bigger than the Red Sea splitting before my eyes? What could be bigger than seeing my enemies destroyed? God says, I'm going to be a new, I'm going to do a new thing. Forget about the past. The problem is we want a new thing in an old place. Oh God, I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to preach. How can we move forward looking back? Imagine us going where God wants to take us. God is trying to take you somewhere new and you can't make progress looking back. Looking back is going to slow you down. You can't even steady yourself looking back. But, but, but you, you, you're so enamored by what happened in the past that you don't realize that your last miracle was not your last miracle. That God is getting ready to do something that you cannot begin to imagine. They could not imagine standing at the Red Sea that it would be open. What are you facing today? What are you looking at today? What are you looking straight into the eye of that you're thinking it'll never happen? Listen, God says this, I'm, I'm going to do something that is beyond what I've done for you in the past. He says, behold, behold, which means to look. And it doesn't mean to just look casually, recognizing that it's in front of you. But look with anticipation. Look with expectation. I'm looking ahead at what is possible. I'm, I'm, I heard what happened to Ebony. I heard what happened to Joe. But I believe God can do it for me. Somebody say it's already done. It's already. I, I, I'm not just listening as the praise reports are coming forth. But I'm anticipating my praise report. I'm, I'm anticipating God turning things in my favor. I'm, I'm looking forward with faith, realizing that I'm moving into something that only God could prepare for me. He says, I'm going to do a new thing now. Hit your neighbor and say, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't, don't. Oh, don't miss it. I don't want you looking back that you miss what God is doing next. I don't want you to be looking ahead without expectation, thinking that God is not going to do what he said he was going to do. His word is going to perform it. Somebody say sweatless victory. His word is going to perform it. His word will accomplish that which he sent it to do. All I'm going to have to do is stand there and give God glory. I wonder if there's somebody that can give God glory in advance right now. He ain't done it yet, but I can give him glory in advance. I'm still waiting on his manifestation, but I'm going to give him glory in advance. Faith 
is the foundation for hope. Have you stopped hoping? Have you stopped hoping? I hope God heals my body. I hope God blesses me financially. I hope this works out for me. I hope things get better. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Faith is what anchors our hope. I'm not just hoping things will happen. I'm hoping, knowing by faith, God is going to do a miracle on my behalf. Do you still believe God is a miracle worker? I'm, I'm believing for something that is absolutely unbelievable. Verse 19 says this, I will even make a road in the wilderness. Hear me today. God's not going to have to bring you out of your problem place to bless you. God says, I am going to transform your dry place. I am going to take that which is dry and I'm going to cause it to be watered. God is working even when we don't know he is. Rivers of the desert. And I am going to cause life to come where everybody says there is death. I want to encourage you today. I want to strengthen your faith today. I want you to hope beyond what you can see that God wants to do something new. New means you've not seen it before. New means you haven't heard it before. That there is a tailor-made praise report that's going to come out of you. <laughs> you know, I... I, I, I all the different testimonies that we've been hearing. And, and for those of you that have been tuning in, we've been talking about defining moments on Wednesday nights. And the testimonies have been powerful. But what, what we don't realize is that there are some fresh praise reports that are springing up every week. Oh, look at somebody tell them, I'm next. I'm next. I'm. You need to say it like you know that your season is shifting. Look at somebody, tell them I'm next. I don't mean you no harm, and I'm not trying to be selfish, but just tell them I'm next. I'm, as a matter of fact, stick with me. You can follow me. You can follow me. You can just tell them, stay with me because I'm getting ready to step into the greatest season of my life. I'm getting ready to receive the greatest breakthrough of my life. As a matter of fact, take a picture of me today because tomorrow I'm not going to look the same way I did today. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Tell, tell them, tell them, take a real good look because God is working it out in my favor right now. Somebody shout out next. I'm next. Close your Bibles. Close your Bibles. Pastor, how long are you going to be talking about defining moments? Until I get finished. Well, when are you going to be finished? When we all step into something new and fresh. I don't believe that this is just an individual blessing. I believe it's a household blessing. It's a, it's a household manifestation that God is ordering a defining moment in our lives. And we, by faith, got to catch it and hold on to it until it manifests. 
and don't think that your praise is in vain. Don't think that your worship is in vain. Don't think that your labor is in vain. Don't think that your declaration is in vain. How long will we declare Ephesians 3, 20 and 21? I'm going to say it till my mouth get dry. Then I'm going to drink some water and I'm going to start saying it again. Because I believe that God's got a mind-blowing miracle in store for his people. If you believe it, stand to your feet and begin to give him glory. Oh, come on, give him glory. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Where the worshipers, I need to hear you in this moment. Come on, everybody. Where are the worshipers this morning? Where are you? Come on, come on, open your mouths. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Where the worshipers, where are you? I want to hear you. I'll know you by your voice. Where are the worshipers this morning? Where you understand you're in the threshold. You're in the threshold of a great manifestation. Oh, come on, open your mouths if you know you're in the threshold of a great manifestation. It's in moments like these that sicknesses dry up. Diseases dry up. Illnesses dry up. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. You may think a moment like this is for naught. It's in your moment of worship that God begins to turn things in your favor. Oh, come on. By your, by your worship, God sees your faith. God sees your faith. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Worship that gets heaven's attention. Worship that releases angels to move on your behalf. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Don't just clap your hands. Open your mouths. Open your mouths. Open your mouth. Oh. Come on, come on. Make a sound in this place. Oh, God, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go to the next level of worship. Go to the next level of worship. Come on. Oh, 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 God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You drive the enemy away with your worship. You drive the enemy. Satan doesn't want to hear your worship. Come on, open your mouth. Oh, oh. You're turning the forces of darkness with your worship. Oh, come on, come on, come on, open your mouth, worship him. Oh, come on, open your mouth. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Send the devil fleeing by your worship. Make him run away by your worship. He doesn't want to hear your worship. 
He doesn't want to hear your worship. Oh, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. We worship you, we worship you. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you. Oh, God. If you need deliverance, your worship will transport you to another place. Oh, come on, oh, come on. Your worship is transporting you moving you from one place to another, from one season to another. Oh! Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh! Come on, come on! Open your mouth and give him glory. Oh, we bless you in this place. We bless you in this place. Oh, come on, open your mouth and give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Open your mouth and give him glory. Your name, Jesus. We bless your name. your belly out of your belly God is doing a new thing oh God is doing a new thing God is doing come on declare it over yourself God is Yeah. Say God is doing 
and do things, yeah. Say new things. Say new things. Say new things. Say new things. Say new
Step into the new thing that God has for you. God's got so much more. God's got so much more. God's got so much more for you. Let me see this. God's got so much more for you. Is it okay? Can I pray for you? God's got so much more for you. Just lay your hands on a sweetheart. And we thank you. No more looking back. You've got something fresh for. I wish there were some worshipers in there right now. Worshipers don't watch. They worship. God, I thank you that you turn her mourning into joy. I thank you that as she walk in this new season, that there's greater for her. I thank you for a renewed mind and a renewed heart. Filling those spaces and those places in her life that are left empty and where there's a void. God, I thank you for joy unspeakable and full of glory. Thank you, God, for the new season that you're bringing her into. Come on, let's give God glory now. Oh, come on, let's worship God. Let's worship God. Let's worship God. Hallelujah. Where the worshipers, where the worshipers, where the worshipers, where are the worshipers? Come on, come on, come on. Out of your comfort zone, give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, mama, na, na, mosha. Oh, we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Come on, saints. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. doing a new thing. I can say it, but declare it over your own life. Come on. God is doing a new thing. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. I don't want to move on to another portion of the service without extending an invitation for someone to give their life to Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning and you're not in right standing with God, if you're here this morning and maybe you're a backslider, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ or you were once in right standing with God and you're no longer living according to his word and his will and his plan for your life. If you're here this morning and you acknowledge your need for Christ, would you raise your hand? We just want to pray with you. That's it. If you're here this morning and you say, Brother Pastor, I need Jesus Christ in my life. I don't want to live another day. Or maybe I was once saved. I was once living according to his plan. But I veered away from that. And today, 
I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. If you're here, just raise your hand. We just want to pray with you. Is there one? Is there one? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Well, it appears as though we are all a part of the household of faith today. Can we give God glory? Come on, give God glory. You ought to at least be excited about the new season that God is bringing you in. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let's receive Missionary Green as she comes at this time. Man, God bless you all. Going quickly to our announcements for this week. We know that Sunday school, the greatest school in the whole wide world, is every Sunday at 9 a.m. You could join us on campus or on Zoom. Uh, teen discipleship, that is what we call TED, will be Monday, March 25th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And our youth are in youth church right now every Sunday at 10 a.m. with the exception of first Sundays. Master Your Mind with Dr. Pendleton will be on Monday, March 18th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And the youth department is gearing up for our spring festival to be held next Saturday, March the 23rd. And they're coming in now. Can we celebrate our children? Amen. And those that give leadership to them, we are excited for the fall for the spring festival coming very quickly on March 23rd. Our youth department is asking that you share in donations to include baskets, plastic eggs, and individually wrapped candy that you buy that way. You can feel free to share in a monetary gift if you're not able to go out to the store by way of Givelify or Cash App using the title Youth Spring Fest Donation. All right, donations could be dropped off um, at the church this Thursday, March 21st at 7 p.m. If you have already purchased those items and have not brought them, feel free to do so at that time. The youth department is also in need of some volunteers for the festival. So please see Sister Laura. She's there in the balcony. If you'll wave, stand up so everybody could see you. Or Sister Tarnisha, she's back there as well. Um, they will be in the lobby to receive you if you are interested in assisting with that. The ACE Summit, that is our Adult Christian Educators Summit, is coming April 27th and 28th. Please feel free to see myself or Sister Ebony in the lobby. Stand up so they see who you are after service so that you can register. You want to be one in the number. Project Fill the House. Yes, our focus for this week is social media. All right, we know y'all be on there. So please take the opportunity to share Christ and invite someone to church next Sunday using either of your social media platforms. Our community outreach is every Monday at 2 p.m. and we give away food to our community. Please join us Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. for our corporate prayer, Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon for intercessory prayer. And then on Saturdays at 9 a.m., we pray for our leaders, our bishop, and our first lady. Amen. Amen. And this Wednesday, we are having Bible study again in person and online. Please, as many of you who can, please come into the sanctuary this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We would love to see you in the place to en engage in this wonderful panel discussion that has been going on. Please join us, and we will also be on Facebook and YouTube Live. God bless you. These are your announcements. Thank you, Missionary Green. We have been having our Defining Moments panel discussion all this month, and the final installment of that will be this Wednesday night. We'd like to encourage those of you just to continue to tune in. We will have some uh, different panelists on this week as we will just be discussing Defining Moments, and also we'll be answering some questions. And so if you have 
some questions that you would like answered, we're going to invite you to please, um, you can email those in at, uh, KB, uh, at uh, administration at kbcinc.org. Excuse me, info at kbcinc.org. You can email them and we will do the best we can to try to address some of the questions that we receive as it relates to defining moments. This has been a tremendous uh, season of discussion about it. Our previous panelists have been a tremendous blessing to everyone who was listening, and we believe that this final night is going to be absolutely amazing. And so join us. Please be mindful as we continue to move forward in our Fill the House campaign that you can stop at the table outside and see someone get cards if necessary invite people to church next sunday is palm sunday it is going to be a tremendous time of worship the following sunday is resurrection sunday and we're going to be meeting over on the lily of the valley side we want to encourage you to please continue to join us in our fill the house campaign are there any first time guests that may have come in since the beginning of service amen god bless you Thank you so much for coming. Anyone else, a first time guest, you've never been here before. You're, amen, praise God for you. Thank you for coming. We wanna put something, a, a card in your hand. Our, our ushers are passing out uh, some information for you to have. And additionally, immediately following our service, there is a reception that is prepared in your honor. We didn't know we were coming but we prepared a reception in your honor. And myself and the First Lady are going to meet you uh, immediately after the service, if you'll give us an opportunity to do so. Our dear sister Johnson is standing here to my left, your right, and she will assist you in getting uh, to that particular area. Are there anyone, any individuals that are here this morning where you would like to join Kingdom Builders? You're here and you've feel led of the Lord to join our church. We would like to extend that invitation to you this morning. Amen. Just raise your hand so that we can identify you and we can get you in the process. Amen. Well, it looks like we're all family this morning and we praise God for you. Now we're going to worship the Lord in giving this morning. On the row ahead of you, you should see a QR code. You can scan it with your phone and it will take you to the three uh, electronic platforms that you can join us as we return the tithe and we bring an offering. We are a tithing church. We are a sowing church. We thank God for his blessing in our life and we return the tithe that belongs to him and we sow a seed thanking God for blessing in our life and we invite you to join us this morning as we worship the Lord in giving. If you're here in person and would like to give by cash or check by way of envelope, if you raise your hand, our ushers are in the aisles now, they will bring you one. Amen. We have a couple here in the front. On my left, your right, please raise your hand high so the ushers can see you. And we thank you in advance for your obedience to scripture as well. There's one here, couple here in the middle, in the middle, amen. God bless you, thank you. If you would like an envelope, please raise your hand. All others, we welcome you to go to one of our electronic platforms, Cash App, Givelify, or PayPal, and we can all worship together in this moment as we return the tithe and give an offering. And we. Thank God for you. Thank God for your presence this morning, for joining us. And we look forward to the next time that we will worship together. Uh, I want to thank God for everyone on the street evangelism team yesterday, going out into the community, sharing the love of Jesus Christ, informing them about our upcoming events here, the Spring Festival, which will be this Saturday. Certainly our Palm Sunday worship service. And on Good Friday, we're going to commemorate the last seven words of Christ. And it is going to be a tremendous time of worship. Seven individuals 
from right here in the audience. You don't know, you may be sitting next to one of the speakers right now. And so we invite you to come and let's reflect upon the last seven words of Christ prior to his death on the cross and remember the price he paid, the sacrifice he made so that we can enjoy the life that we are living today. And then of course on that Sunday morning is Resurrection Sunday and we're going to come ready to give God the highest praise. Amen. Let's all stand as we prepare to dismiss with the blessing of the Lord. Last week, we received word from missionary Denara Shepherd uh, that her mother had become critically ill and was in ICU. And she made a decision on Thursday to uh, travel to Florida to be with her father and certainly to stand by her mother uh, during her time of crisis. One minute ago, Denora text, she's being discharged. Come on, let's praise God for Lady Shepherd's healing. We've been praying for her and believing God. He's still a healer. He is still a healer. And so we thank God for what he did in Lady Shepherd's life, in her body. And we'll continue to pray for Lady Shepherd as well as Denara's safe return as she travels back home. To all of our first time guests, if you would not mind stepping out into the aisle and come and meet Sister Johnson. She's going to come and lead you to our guest connections area where we can meet you. Come on, Kingdom Builders, let's celebrate our guests. God bless you. So good to see you. There's another one that's coming there. Can we keep clapping until? Amen. Praise God for you. We got one more coming, uh, Sister Bosky. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Are there any birthdays today? Birthdays today. Today is your birthday. Amen. Well, we will dismiss by declaring the word of the Lord found in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that's at work in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Won't you greet somebody in the love of Jesus before you leave?